Um, we pulled the model in our computer so you can show it. Some of those orange levels are 19 to 21 foot of storm surge. Now there's a lot, a lot of hole out here, but that's Everglades City right there. That is Marco Island, uh, Naples right in there. And those colors are about 17 to 19 foot storm surge. That's what the governor was saying, and, and he lives down there, so he's paying close attention to that. Uh, but you can see it's not as bad as you head over in that direction. That's with the storm coming up near Key West, staying just offshore here, just barely. I mean, that, that's going to be blowing a lot on that east side of the eye. And then coming up over Sanibel Island, perhaps, or maybe even a little west of Sanibel Island at this point. I, it's probably hard for Sanibel to escape a lot of it if it doesn't come much further to the west. Now, here are some of the numbers here. We've got uh, this shading here is about seven to nine foot. It's going to be a little bit more than that. This number has actually come down, so I'll adjust this graphic. But you see the green here? About 11 to 13 in Port Charlotte. The darker green is about 9 to 11 in this area right in here. It's a north port area. And Venice, it's tough to see, but there are some spots in there that are showing some of that darker green, which would be 9 to 11 foot. And again, this is when it's blowing a little northwest, but especially west as we're going into early on Monday morning before sunrise. Now, let's get into the bay. 7 to 9 foot. Especially as you get over here towards Ruskin, towards Apollo Beach. Apollo Beach, you're going to have some water. It's going to be hard to get away from that at this particular point. Initially, the wind's going to blow out of the northeast, and it's going to blow water up here into the Feather Sound area, over towards the base of the Gandy Bridge, the Howard Franklin. A lot of, um, there's some condos sitting right here. There's some condos all sitting right in here as well, too. That's going to really have to be watched, seven to nine foot of water. Uh, and you can see how far in that would go. That's the problem with Pinellas. You get hit with a with even a bigger storm and just the right way. You can almost see it here. Pinellas becomes two islands. You see that right there? There's going to be a surge coming up in here. And then you've got the Pinellas Ridge, which starts down here and kind of runs up like this. So Bel Air, Bel Air Beach, Bel Air, uh, Bel Air uh, Bluffs is sitting on the bluffs, of course. It's on the ridge. So that's real high ground. That goes all the way up uh, towards US 19 uh, in Curlew by, by the Home Depot up there. That's sitting up on that ridge. That's about 60 foot, and that's high. That is high for Pinellas County. Uh, level A and B, level A goes up to about 11 foot of storm surge. Now, this area right here, seven to nine feet of storm surge, all the way up and down from Tarpon Springs through Holiday, through Hudson, through Spring Hill, well, the western side there of Hernando County. And then you see this, that's a little less right there uh, as you get uh, south of Crystal River in, in western parts of Citrus County. But Crystal River itself, it, it's really low there. You're right on the water. It's going to be about nine to 11 foot in some there's an indication it could be a little bit more than that. We'll just have to wait and see exactly what it looks like by the time it gets there. So what are the zones? Um, guys, can we switch the source for me if you don't mind? I want to go, go over and uh, show you the, the actual maps here. So this is Citrus County. And so essentially you're looking uh, US 19 right in that area. Th that this is the zone itself, and this is based on elevation. So really, this is level A in the red. Level B, the green is C. A, B, C, D, and E. Uh, and so you can see where those levels are. And that's why it's so shallow out here. So that's Citrus County. And for Citrus County, wh guys, what's the, uh, the mandatory? What's oh, yeah. Citrus County? Got to get my, uh, yeah. All right, just shout it out whenever you hear it. I appreciate it. All right, I found it. I found my list right here. Here it is. Uh, Citrus County. Um, West of US 19. Yeah, w I forgot about that. That's the uh, obvious, obvious one. Now let's go down to H Hernando County. So Hernando County, we're talking uh, zones A and B, which is the red and right here in the orange. And you can see US 19 right there. So it is basically right along and west of US 19. And it's going to be, it's gonna be possible to get a little bit of water up towards US 19. That is possible. Uh, but it's more likely that it's going to be staying in that red shaded area. Okay, and so you see if you're east of uh, 19, you're actually looking pretty good. So let's get into uh, Pasco County. So this is a little tougher one to see. That's 19 right there, kind of coming up here. So it's a long and west of there. And in Pasco County, we've got mandatory A and B. And B is this orange area that is right alongside US 19. So that's, that's why we're trying to get everybody out of there. And especially goes down towards Newport Ritchie area as well, too. All right, now let's head over towards uh, uh, Hillsborough. I'm going to do this northern part of Pinellas coming up here in just a little bit, but it's ba basically the same thing. So that is Tampa Road. There is a mandatory evacuation in Hillsboro for level A. There is an optional for level B. That is line ball right there coming over. It's amazing how shallow this is right here. It's flat. 
and it's just it's just not much more. Ooh, the Sunshine Skyway Bridge has reopened. Yeah. Good news. Yeah. Just got a tweet. All right. Anticipate closing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it'll be open and up. It'll yeah. Be, yes, it'll but go it back is, and forth yeah. right now. They have somebody stationed out there. They're looking at the wind, and then it will go closing. It'll it'll close for a while. By tomorrow afternoon, Eventually, it'll yeah. just yeah. shut down. Um, it won't be open until sometime on Monday, likely. Um, but look at that. That's Tampa Road. I mean, Tampa Road could, could be underwater when this comes back on the backside around four, five, six in the morning on Monday morning. Uh, and and we're, we're thinking about level wise is about five to seven foot in here. So if you're living right along the water there, along the marshes there, about four or five foot of water is possible underneath your house. A lot of those houses are up on stilts there. And this includes over there in the Rocky Point area too. And there's a lot of houses. You see all those little lines right there? Those are little, it's incredible communities there that everybody has a boat. It's all a little uh, waterways in there. And so that, it's low, we know it's low living there, but that is definitely an area that's going to see some flooding. That's Rocky Point right in there. Crystal Beach area, Howard Franklin, uh, the base of the Howard Franklin as well. Now the airport is sitting right in here. I think the airport's pretty, pretty close to being okay. There could, there's a potential that it crosses over uh, 275 there, but usually I think the way they built that now, it's actually gonna be okay. Now, pushing water up into the rivers. I don't think we're going to see as much of it up in here in this red because that's this is this map is drawn purely by elevation. And if you were to just fill it up like a bathtub, here's where level A would be up to 11 feet would be in the red. Storm surge doesn't work that way. Storm surge works like we're blowing wind that way and it's going to fill up over there. And so that's why it varies on every storm and every way. But this map gives us an idea to know, hey, I know that we're going to get the west wind the, our, as our worst wind. So that west wind blowing this way is going to blow the water up in here in the Crystal Beach area. That, that's what we use these maps for. Now let's go into downtown Tampa. Uh, downtown Tampa, and, and this could be where we see some of the worst because if the wind's coming up like this, it's taking a lot of this water and forcing it up there. MacDill Air Force Base. Uh, there's the Gandhi Bridge coming over. Uh, and then basically you've got Bayshore Boulevard sitting right in here at Davis Islands. Um, you get over into Riverview. You can see Highway 41 likely to be underwater, or at least possibly could be underwater, Highway 41. Now, again, this is a storm surge created by the wind, and when the wind comes down, the water will come down too. Now, some of the water will pond in, in areas that it just can't drain back just naturally, uh, but, th but you're going to have some issues on Highway 41 first thing in the morning. And that goes all the way down into Apollo Beach as well too. Uh, you can see the, e the western side of South Tampa here. Um, yeah. Hula Bay down in there, that's all zone A. Remember zone B is optional, but there is a little bit of a ridge right there. Um, that, so there's some higher ground that you're looking right in this area right in here. And then South Tampa itself, this is downtown. Uh, there's going to be issues right, basically south of 275. That's what, that's what you're looking at. There's 275 right there. And then you come down towards the vet. That's the veterans right there going across and down. So from the veterans south, we have to watch for some water. And that's, that's a good chunk there. I mean, we're talking right along Bayshore Boulevard as well. That is a possibility, at least some of that water, at least getting up into Bayshore, that, that which floods on a rain event, that's a different type of flooding. Now let's come down, let's go to Apollo Beach where I just showed you that. There's Ruskin and there's Sun City Center. Uh, 41 is sitting out there, so most of it's gonna be well west of that at that particular point. But we certainly wanna watch it there. All right, now let's go to Pinellas County, Central and Southern. Again, we're working on Northern Pinellas County right now. Uh, this is obviously worst case scenario, but we're talking about the red areas here. That's where we think we're going to get some water. You're getting into Old Northeast, down into there. So you're definitely going to have some water there. Um, we're mandatory A, Pinellas, we are mandatory A and B, A and B. So you've got the orange areas in here too. Uh, there's 4th Street going down right there. There's Gandhi Bridge, and then the new flyover, Gandhi flyover. Is that what it's called, a flyover? Yeah, yeah. Because we fly over it. <laughs> <laughs> Since I have you right there, can you explain that pocket, the, the area that is not being evacuated? Again, that's elevation or is that? It's, yeah, it's completely it's, elevation. Because you yeah. see, you know, the red, the green, the yellow, and then you see this pocket there in the middle. And yeah. you're like, why? why? It, because it's, a, it's like a hill. Mm -hmm. It's like a big round hill. And so this is the worst case scenario. If you just, again, took the water and went straight up, mm -hmm. that's the area that wouldn't flood upwards. So I, don't, I don't know what the top level is on level five, but, you know, that's the an idea. Of what and then here's the other one. Mm -hmm. This is the other one. This is that Pinellas Ridge that moves off to the north and the northeast. So that, that's a lot of high ground. In fact, you know, we used to evacuate the building and go over here, <laughs> go towards the coast because of that. 
Uh, but you can see our, our television station is actually based like right here. <laughs> so yeah, it's good to show people why why we left. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly right. We, you got You just don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, you take the precautions. It doesn't mean we're going to get water all the way up in here. When the eye comes through, if it takes the track it is now, the wind's going to be out of the north and northeast, and it's going to be all in this area right in here. That's going to be the best chance. So right now, I think we're seeing five <coughs> to seven is what that looked like, uh, and then and then on the back side the wind's going to be pushing the other way. So Old Northeast gets it, and then the drop, and then the water drops pretty quickly and goes across over to Apollo Beach and Ruskin and the Sun City Center area. And then now back out on the beaches, you've got the same thing. You've got it coming from the intercoastal on one side, but then I think the, the worst will probably be coming in from the west and southwest on the backside. There's just, there's nothing to slow the wind down out here. It's coming in off the water. So it's just going to be blowing pretty good. It usually is weaker on the bottom side, but just because th there's nothing blocking it. Um, and so you can see all these, all th this is the reason, guys, all that red right there, that the evacuations were issued early. Remember Pinellas County the other day issued evacuations for level A. We were like, whoa. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, it takes time to get that many people off of the, well, it's, we call it peninsula, but I mean, go across to the Howard Franklin on a regular day, the Gandy <laughs> Bridge, you know, the Courtney Campbell. Much less when people are, 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 are a little freaked out, honestly. You know what I mean? They're worried. They're trying to get everything together. They're not thinking straight. They're driving. Did I do this? Did I do that? Oh, I forgot this. What am I going to do? I can't get that. Where am I going? In traffic. And so they want to give you enough time to be able to let that occur safely. And that's, what they, uh, that's why they made the call the other day. Okay, let's go down to the south here. Uh, obviously, you know, Tierra Verde, St. Pete Beach, Pass the Grill, beautiful, decent chance. We're talking about five to seven foot storm surge. Some of that will get up over. Uh, over the, the wall there and towards, towards the, the houses there and the hurricane, the restaurant there. So we're going to be watching that. Now let's get down towards the southern end. This is the Skyway right here. Okay, so you're coming across the Skyway, you come down, coming over into Bradenton right here. Cool little skate park right there. Um, that, yeah, a <laughs> little bit. I'm getting smarter. That's going to push water up the river. So if you live along the river, that's coming up. It'll be brief, but again, it's a west to southwest wind, west to northwest wind, and then a westerly and a west to southwest wind. And that just, that just drives it right up, the water, right up the river, and then that's why you see all of those, uh, those areas there along the rivers. Now, back out to the beach. My buddy Curtis out on Anna Maria Island. So we're thinking 6 to 10, 6 to 11. We had some folks out there today that are saying 7 to 12 foot storm surge. 12 would put a lot of water over AMI, and we don't want that, obviously. But I think that's a good chance. The bridges, you know the bridges you take that go over to AMI? We're talking storm surge all the way there. The, the bridges may be okay, but even storm surge on the other side of the bridge, uh, on the eastern side of the bridge. And then further down, you get towards, almost getting down towards Longbow Key. You see the northern end of it right here. Uh, same thing. I mean, it's just one of the barrier islands. That's going to be level A. Now, this is Sarasota County. Uh, there you go. Coming all the way down. It's this area right in here towards Laurel that's going to have probably the heaviest. But it's, again, it'll be brief and it's going to be blowing in this direction. It's not terrible there. It's the outer, it's the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the barrier islands, excuse me. The barrier islands are the ones that are going to take it. Look, guys, naturally, that's what those islands are for. We just built houses on them because they have fantastic sunsets and we like long walks on the beach. Um, but, but that's what they're for. They're, they're, they actually work to help um, protect the inland locations, outer banks. Uh, most of North Carolina, some of South Carolina, same setup. Uh, that's why we have the outer, have those barrier islands. Same thing over on the East Coast. You look at Cocoa Beach, same thing. It's a barrier island. Now, you get down to southern Sarasota County, and th this flooding that you see here is not as likely. There will be some because it will get pushed up into the river, but a lot of that's going to be, in fact, going to go low because it's blowing out of the west-northwest initially and then around to the west. So that, that's, that's not terrible. I don't think that's going to happen. Again, these colors are not the actual flood that we will see, they are the levels. And so then we look at those levels and say, which way is the wind blowing? Okay, so I expect in this area right here is where we're gonna have an issue. All right, guys, if you could jump me back over to the other computer, let's go with that uh, forecast track that we've got. Uh, I wanna show it on the, the other computer, there we go. 932 millibars, these are the 7 p.m. numbers. We should be getting 8 p.m. numbers here momentarily, uh, but we are, yeah, we definitely should be getting those in here. What is it, 120? Yeah, because it was 125. Um, but you can see that it's moving uh, off to the north, northwest. And this is locking up on me. There it goes. 
So the track hasn't changed much. We'll be watching for this. It, it may shift a little bit back towards the west. The timing hasn't changed too much. And I got to be honest with you guys. West northwest at nine, and what do we've got now? Yep, west northwest at nine too. So no big change, no big change at this particular point. Um, let's see if we can actually get that radar loop because I want to see exactly where it is. See right there, it was moving off towards the west and almost a little jog to the west southwest. But you can see right here, and we're going to end up watching this, this satellite picture. See, it's still. I mean, it's not making that turn just quite yet, but it's it's likely to do that. Yeah, keep going, keep going, keep on trucking. Uh, so guys. Um, we're going to end up seeing this thing make the turn shortly. And what is it, 8 o'clock, 8.19 right now? By uh, 10.30, 11.30, we should really see this thing turning if it's going to make that turn right there. If it doesn't, I mean, it's still is going to do something like this and come up. It could come over to the west and still get up on in that track. This track is not a done deal by any means. This is just the forecast, saying it's going to be from here to here, and they draw a line in between. So that's kind of what we're looking at. Um, I do think that the, the rain is actually going to spread to the north, of course, and continue to get heavier and heavier for Key West and the Keys up through Key Largo. And then as you get up towards Fort Lauderdale and Miami, um, we're losing data here, but you can see these real quick right there. Those are those waves that we've been seeing, and those have been producing the tornadoes as well, too. Here are those models. Now, the models, well, let's zoom in a little closer here. There, we still have some out here, on, and not only some, but we have a few that are pretty far over here to the east. And remember we showed you that water vapor loop with that short wave there. That thing is diving down and it may actually try and pick it up and push it a little bit. And that may be what's happening, guys. These are going to keep coming in um, and this graphic here just updates as the models come in. Each one of those lines is a model. And so when that particular model is done, it sends the data over, we get the data. So we'll be keeping an eye on it very closely for you guys. We'll keep that radar going uh, down south and we'll see exactly when it's going to make that turn. Yeah. 